Hi guys, it's James again, back with another list. And this was one that I finished up recently, and I had not avoided it, but I was going for the more uh, obscure lists, and this one I thought maybe at the time was a little more generic. But after watching a few movies recently, I figured it could be put together rather easily, and it does have some exciting choices on it. So, this one is the top 10 action films. And I hope, I hope you like this one. As I hope you like all of them. Anyway. Uh, so starting at number 10, we have a movie called Security. Uh, from 2017, this one stars Antonio Banderas and Ben Kingsley. And essentially, it's... You have this former special, special forces soldier who's back from back from overseas and he's just trying to find work because he's trying to he's living away from his wife and child and trying to get a job make enough money to bring them to him and he ends up just struggling from place to place and finding he eventually finds a job as a security guard at a local mall meets the guys there gets the rundown of the place and at the same time, these federal marshals are transporting this young girl, and it gets attacked. And the girl makes her way to the mall, and this band of mercenaries led by Ben Kingsley are there to, to get her. And they're trying to assault the mall, and, it turn, and what they don't realize is that these regular, ordinary Joe security guards excuse me, now have a former special forces guy in their midst. So the mercenaries attacking this place don't really have an idea what they're in for. And Antonio Banderas playing character Eddie is going to do what it takes to protect his own security guards as well as this girl from Ben Kingsley and his army of mercenaries. And I was surprised because I, I didn't know, I hadn't heard about this movie. It all of a sudden it just pops up online. Ended up picking it up when it came out. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, it had a, it has a great poster. Great action pose for Antonio Banderas. I'm like, well, it looks all right. Has a decent cast. And it's, and it's pretty damn cool. Who directed this one? It was Alain de Rocher, who's done, done some great action movies. Has a good track record so far. And yeah, this this one definitely slipped under the radar for a lot of people, and I would recommend it. So that is Security. Number nine, we have a movie called, action comedy movie called The Baytown Outlaws. Now this one stars Billy Bob Thornton, Eva Longoria, got Clayne Crawford from Lethal Weapon, The Lethal Weapon Show, Daniel Cudmore, who was Colossus in X-Men 2 and 3. Um, Travis Fimmel of Vikings fame. Uh, you've also got... It, essentially, Billy Bob Thornton shoots, shoots, his, shoots his wife several times, trying to kill her, and then sends these three redneck brothers infamous redneck brothers mercenaries or something to get her godson to bring it back to him and they end up forming a bond with the kid and decide to protect him and take out billy bob thornton who's this bad criminal guy and the kid is played by he's from game of thrones it is uh, thomas thomas sangster and I thought, and like the 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 young, I guess a teenager, is sort of um, is handicapped, can't can't talk very well, is in a wheelchair, and I thought Thomas, I think it's Thomas Brody Sangster, does such a phenomenal job portraying this character. He must have done a tremendous amount of research on how to portray uh, someone with this sort of handicap. Um, that he just like 
does a great job. I'm not going to say you just assume he's a handicap person, but he he did a he did a great job portraying that character. And the, the, the three brothers are hilarious together, and especially their bond with the kid. And yeah, it's it's a oh Paul Wesley's also in there. Plays a I think he plays an FBI agent. Um, from Paul Wesley from Vampire Diaries. Uh, plays, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Damon's brother from Vampire Diaries, and his character name is escaping me. Anyway, that is the Baytown Outlaws. Number eight, we have a film from early early last year called Guns Akimbo uh directed by directed by what's his name Jason Lee Howden and I don't know how this one slipped past me it got recommended to me by by my friend Dalton starring Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving but I didn't realize that it was directed by the same guy who did Deathgasm that uh New Zealand, New Zealand horror comedy. And this one is more of like an action comedy. And it's, it's awesome. It is awesome. Because he's basically, he, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, uh, plays, what's his name? He plays Miles. And he is pretty much, he has an online presence. And he basically targets trolls. People who just try to start shit online and he basically just verbally takes him down he he sort of provokes the wrong person this guy named Nix, who runs an organization that recruits people to basically gun each other down for money like not regulate regulated by any rules or law just infamous organization that does this and they're trying to kill each other all over town earning money and stuff and just Avoiding the cops, I suppose. And he pisses Nix off, who comes to his house, uh, beats him up, knocks him out. And he wakes up, and he has these two guns nailed, literally nailed, to his hands. <laughs> and he's been, he's been unwittingly, unwillingly entered into this game. And Samara Weaving is already a pro in the game, and she shows up to kill him. So he has to get out of there and try and kill her and they end up teaming up to go against Nix. it's it and just what how he has to navigate the world with these two guns nailed to his hands and partnering up with samara weaving who's just a little off uh it it just results in a super super fun super violent but super fun uh action movie with a great soundtrack yeah uh Iggy Pops, Real Wild Child, pops up near the end during a really violent montage that it just fits perfectly. So that is Guns Akimbo. Number seven, we have a film from 2001 called The Musketeer, and this was sort of a retelling of The Three Musketeers, and it focuses on a young D'Artagnan played by Justin Chambers, and I believe this was his very first role because he was just a mo he was a model, and he went on... He went on to be cast in Grey's Anatomy. Now, I didn't, I've never really watched Grey's Anatomy beyond like the very first episode or two. So I don't know how long he was on the show or if he's still on the show. He may, he may be, but this, this is kind of where he got his start. But you've also got Catherine Deneuve in there, Mina Suvari, Stephen Ray, Tim Roth. Tim Roth in the, in the bad guy man in black role, Lefebvre, I think. Le F oh, Fabe, Febre, something like that. And D'Artagnan goes and ends up recruiting the rest of the three musketeers to rescue Mina Suvari and take down Febre and the, I think the cardinal who's working, who's working with him. And it's, it's like, you've never seen fight scenes and stuff like this in any other three musketeers film. And I believe it was directed by... Peter Hyams, but a lot of the stunts were done by Chui Hark, uh, 
uh, Asian director, and I think uh, says Jin Jin Zhang as stunt choreographer. The 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 stunt choreog choreography, the fight choreography in this movie is pretty amazing for a movie that's nearly twenty years old. Which is one reason I put this on this list. It 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 had it was. I guess uh, pretty well known back then, but I don't think it gets much recognition now. Doesn't doesn't get spoken of much, but it should because it's super fun. Number six, we have a film called Free Fire. This is another one by Ben Wheatley, Kill List and High Rise and uh, Sightseers, A Field in England, all that stuff, and this is basically. Uh, a bunch of a bunch of arms dealers show up to participate in an arms deal at this one warehouse, and it's all these different guys. And something goes wrong with the deal, and they end up all just trying to kill each other. But the cast, it, it it's so funny this movie, just like because they're all shooting each other all over. And they're all scattered all over this warehouse. They're all shooting each other, but they're all getting like superficial wounds in their arms or legs and feet and stuff like that. So nobody's really dying right away and they're all like throwing insults back and forth and trying to team up against each other and it's it's it oh it's hilarious but you've got Charlotte Copley, Army Hammer, Brie Larson, Killian Murphy, Jack Rayner, um, Sam Riley, Noah Taylor. There's just a ton of great actors in this movie just going all out. It's it the movie is so crazy. It's called Free Fire. Number five, we have a film that goes by kind of two titles. Um, when I first watched it, I knew it by the title of Hummingbird, which I think is the international title. But if you get the DVD, at least in North America, I believe, it's called Redemption. And it stars Jason Statham. It's written and directed by Stephen Knight. It stars Jason Statham as sort of a former special ops soldier who's a little bit damaged. Something went wrong on one of his last missions and he left the military and he's come back to town. He's sort of uh, a bum on the streets, getting drunk all the time. And he ends up getting taken in by this nun and she helps him get back on his feet and he ends up taking jobs working for various criminal organizations just as an enforcer and stuff, sort of getting his life back on track. And doing work that he ne not, doesn't necessarily enjoy, but it's keeping him off the streets and keeping him healthy. And just the journey he goes through from on a downward slope, hitting rock bottom and coming back up, and where he ends up, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very impressive um, dramatic turn with, with some action thrown in, but a, a really good dramatic turn by Jason Statham and especially the nun played by Agata Buzek plays Sister Christina. It's, it is a great, great hidden gem that I don't know how many people know about, even if you're fans of Jason Statham. I'm not sure many people know about this film. So, Redemption or Hummingbird? It's known by both titles. Number four, we have a film called Getaway from 2013. Now, this was sort of released under the banner of two different horror banners. Uh, Dark Castle, which was the banner that produced a lot of the, some of the horror remakes, like Ghost Ship, which wasn't a remake, but uh, 13 Ghosts, House on Haunted Hill, which were both remakes. And it was also released under After Dark Films, the label, the banner that uh, puts out films at the Toronto Film Festival, the After Dark Film Festival, which takes place at the Toronto Film Festival. And I've mentioned before, like several titles, like The Deaths of Ian Stone and um, oh, there was one I did for my top 10 horror films, Broken. Um, and this thing is the furthest thing from a horror movie. It's more of an action, action race, uh, chase movie, not necessarily a chase movie, but basically an action movie like Gone 60 Seconds where some people in a car do, driving all over town, just blowing stuff up, doing all sorts of damage. And it's essentially Ethan Hawke, uh, plays, 
his name is Brent Magna. He's a former race car driver who fell on hard times and was picking up work from not the greatest of people and ends up getting out of that life when he met his soon-to-be wife. And they moved back to Bulgaria, which was where she was from, and was trying to get their lives back on track. And one day, excuse me, she he comes home and the place is trashed and she's she's gone blood on the floor she's been kidnapped and he gets a call from this mysterious voice played by john voight uh saying your wife's been taken if you want to get her back you need to do exactly what i say go to this parking garage to this certain level in the parking garage and locate a car you'll know which one and steal it and wait for their instructions and it's this I think they call it like the Shelby Super Snake. It's basically Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds, souped up with all these cameras. It's armored. It's just a beast of a car. And he has to drive around town, like crashing into things and doing all sorts of shady stuff. Or he won't see his wife again. And at one point, he stops the car and this girl gets in and holds him at gunpoint. It's played by Selena Gomez. And it turns out this was her car. And she wants it back. She souped it up, and now he's bastardized it, putting all these cameras. Well, it wasn't me. It's this, it's this mysterious voice. And he's trying to talk her down and listen to the voice coming through the phone. And basically, he's like, you have to get kill her. Well, I'm not going to kill her. Then get her in the car and go. So <laughs> he takes her with him, and she becomes his, basically, accomplice or co-pilot or something. And I don't get the hate on this film. I think for, I mean, Ethan Hawke was a great actor. Selena Gomez does a great job. John Voight puts on a good accent. And he's basically the sinister voice on the phone. But the car is awesome. And the driving, the, the stunt driving in this movie is spectacular. So if you take it for what it is, I think you'll have a really good time. Because I do every time I watch it. So that's getaway number three we have a film called stretch and this is done by joe carnahan who did like narc um uh he started with narc no he started with uh a direct to video film uh it's like i'm going to look it up Blood, Guts, Bullets, and High Octane. And he did Smoke and Aces, the A-Team reboot, The Grey. And he has one call, one out now called Boss Level. But it was basically, this was his first film, uh, since his first film, that didn't get a theatrical release. Which was surprising, because I remember waiting for it to come out, and it didn't. And then it came out on video. And it is awesome. You got Patrick Wilson playing uh, down on his luck limo driver who's trying to earn enough money to pay back his bookie. So he's driving all over town. He ends up picking this, picking up this eccentric, crazy uh, fare played by Chris Pine, who just takes him on this wild journey all over town because the guy is crazy. And let's see who else is in there. Ed Helms, James Badgedale, Jessica Alba. I believe um, Randy Couture is in there somewhere. And just, it's one of those, uh, pretty much all takes place in one day. And he's in the limo almost the entire time. And just think of like the craziest thing that could happen to you, craziest things that could happen to you in one day while you're driving a limo. And you've got this movie. It's just insane. I don't want to say too much about it because your eyes will just be popping out of your head. This movie's pretty awesome. It's called Stretch from 2014. Uh, let me see. Number two, we have a film called Takers. I love this movie. Uh, this is a bank robbery. Uh, sorry, cops versus robbers film, essentially. You've got this team of bank robbers and these cops that are trying to pursue them. And the bank robbers are played by Paul Walker, Idris Elba, uh, Michael Ely, 
T.I. Harris, Chris Brown, Hayden Christensen, and Zoe Saldana is sort of the former girlfriend of one of the bank robbers who, who was with Michael Ely. And yeah, and sort of like they broke up and then they're starting to get back together during the movie. And the cops that are pursuing them are Matt Dillon and Jay Hernandez. So it's a pretty stellar cast. And I remember watching this one through uh, at the theater three days in a row with a friend of mine. And it was just, it's, it, it, it's so much fun and it has such, it has a lot of great lines, mostly from T.I. Harris. Really impressively shot too. And it's almost, you're not rooting for the bank robbers, but it's one of those ones where you don't know who's really the good guys. I mean, they're not good guys because they're bank robbers, but they're very likable bank robbers. And you've got the cops, Matt Dillon, who's sort of separated from his wife, trying to get time with his kid. And Jay Hernandez, who's his partner, who's trying to keep him in line. And it's sort of like these guys clashing throughout the movie. And it's... It's great. It's great. And I always say, like, I think Hayden Christensen is a good actor. You only need to watch Shattered Glass and Life is a House to realize that, regardless of how, what you think of him in the, in the second and third Star Wars prequels. It's a great, great movie. Takers from 2010. Now, number one, we have a film called No Escape. Not the Ray Liotta uh, sci-fi movie from years ago this one's from 2015 done by john eric dowdle and it stars owen wilson lake bell pierce brosnan and you basically got owen wilson and lake bell and their two two daughters family that moved to for work to asia for his job and while they're there the soldiers attack the i think it's the presidential palace and stage a coup basically assassinate the president i believe and start to take over the town a revolution happens in the town and they're in their hotel this big massive hotel when the whole city goes to hell and they have to get out of the hotel and try and get out of the city or the country for that matter and they end up meeting up with pierce brosnan who's a former i don't know if he's a former is he a former agent? He might be a former agent, special agent or whatever, but he's basically just there. Uh, he's a bit of an alcoholic, and he's just basically a fixer. He can get things, get people from place to place. And just as the whole city descends into chaos, they're trying to get from place to place without getting killed because there's like soldiers everywhere that are just murdering people left and right. And this one, from almost beginning to end, is maybe one of the most tense movies you're going to watch in recent years. Just the insanity that they have to go through to stay alive is, is staggering. And, yeah. Uh, let me just see. Any other actors that stand out in this? It's uh, Owen Wilson, Lake Bell, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, pretty much. And there is one scene where, I won't say too much about it, but one of the one of the enemy soldiers is putting the family in this precarious position, and just the insane look on his face is pretty terrifying, uh, considering the situation they're in. So that is No Escape. Number one for a reason... Oh, man. I can't recommend this one enough. Um, okay, so that is it for the top ten action films. Um, I hope you I hope you like these ones. I hope you check them out and tell your friends. Um, so like and subscribe if you if you like this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.